Well, did you hear about the guy in Kentucky that built Noah's Ark to full scale? Just as Noah was, uh, Noah received a vision to build the ark in his day, a man by the name of Ken Ham uh, from Australia, uh, an Australian Christian, he received a, a word from God to build an ark in his day. And he said, if I build an ark, people will come. I find it a little bit ironic that uh, Noah's second son's name was Ham. Uh, and, and here we have a man by the name of Ken Ham who, who receives a, a, a message to build this ark. And nevertheless, a like Noah's ark uh, in his day, uh, the ark that Ken Ham built stretches three or, or one and a half football fields long. It rises uh, as high as seven stories and it is said to be the largest timber frame building in the world. The project costs over a hundred million dollars. It will employ uh, 787 uh, new jobs. It will be visited, they estimate, by half a million people per year. And Ham believes that it will become a, an international uh, pilgrimage site, as well as be a draw for those who are, are curious, uh, the, the seculars, and even the skeptics. Ham also says that the ark he built uh, is intended to serve as a vivid warning that, according to the Bible, God uh, sent a flood in Noah's time to wipe out the corrupt people and God will deliver a fiery end to those who reject the Bible and accept modern day evils uh, in our time. While him may be, be right uh, in his thinking, I like to think of the ark as a, as a symbol, if you will, a symbol of, of salvation, a symbol of hope, uh, a symbol of God's grace offered to all people who will respond to God in faith and be art builders and be art builders in their own life. So as I begin this sermon this morning, I want to ask you, are you an art builder? Are you an art builder? Let's take a look at our scripture from Genesis chapter 6, beginning with verse 5 through verse 22. Hear the word of the Lord. The Lord saw that the wickedness of humankind was great in the earth and that every inclination of the thoughts of their hearts was only evil continually. And the Lord was sorry that he made humankind on earth and it grieved him to his heart. So the Lord said, I will blot out from the earth the human beings I have created people together with animals and creeping things and birds of the air. For I am sorry that I have made them. But Noah found favor in the sight of the Lord. These are the descendants of Noah. Noah was a righteous man, blameless in his generation. Noah walked with God. And Noah had three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Now the earth was corrupt in God's sight, and the earth was filled with violence. And God saw that the earth was corrupt, for all flesh had corrupted its ways upon the earth. And God said to Noah, I have determined to make an end of all flesh, for the earth is filled with violence because of them. Now I am going to destroy them along with the earth. Make yourself an ark of cypress wood, make rooms in the ark, and cover it inside and out with pitch. This is how you are to make it. The length of the ark, 300 cubits. Its width, 50 cubits. And its height, 30 cubits. Make a roof for the ark and finish it to be a cubit above. And put a door, put the door of the ark in its side. Make it with 
lower and the second and third level or decks. For my part, I'm going to bring a flood of waters on the earth to destroy from under heaven all flesh in which is the breath of life. Everything that is on the earth shall die. But I will establish my covenant with you, and you shall come into the ark, you, your sons, and your wife, and your sons' wives with you. And every living thing of all flesh, you shall bring two of every kind into the ark to keep them alive with you. They shall be male and female. Of the birds according to their kinds and of the animals according to their kind. Of every creeping thing of the ground according to its kind. Two of every kind shall come to the come into you to keep them alive. Also take with you every kind of food that is eaten and stored up, and it shall serve as food for you and for them. Noah did this. He did all that God commanded him. And now if we will flip over to Hebrews chapter 11, from, from which our heroes of the faith come, and we find in Hebrews 11, 7, By faith, Noah warned by God about events as yet unseen, respected the warning, and built an ark to serve his household. By this, he condemned the world and became an heir to the righteousness that is in accordance with faith. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Now, if you remember uh, from last week, we talked about, uh, about Enoch. And Enoch lived in, in the most corrupt uh, uh, society uh, in the world uh, at that time. Yet, uh, Enoch walked with God. Well, it got worse. It got worse. We find this morning that it got so bad that God uh, was sorry that he made humankind. And, and it even says that it, it grieved God. It grieved God in, in the depths of his heart. We find here that both human beings and God suffers painful effects of human sin. God, God is not acting out of, of anger or, or vengeful uh, judgment, but as, as a grieving and pained parent. One who has raised their children the best that they know how, and yet the children have chosen to, to take a different path, uh, a different way. And we witness that sad story many times in our world today. But there was one man, uh, our Bible tells us, that did not conform to the ways of the world. Uh, and his name was Noah. Noah was the great grandson of Enoch who walked with God. Now, what Paul here just for a moment to point out the lineage uh, of faith here. And the importance of, of raising our children in the faith. Uh, and that it might continue from generation to generation. That's one of the reasons we are here. We're here to praise and worship God, but we're here to raise our children uh, in the faith uh, in this place uh, this morning as well. <coughs> Noah followed in Enoch's footsteps and was also known as one who walked with God. Now, in Genesis 6, 9, the Bible says that, that, jo, uh, that Noah was a righteous man. That he was blameless in his generation. Not that Noah was without sin, but that he was blameless in his generation. And he walked with God. And you know, the name Noah uh, means relief. It means a, a comfort. And for the first time, uh, God and man team up, if you will. They team up to save the world in this story. Noah is not famous for being a righteous man and walking with God. He inherited that from his great-grandfather Enoch. Noah is famous and is a famous Bible hero because of his great faith in God in which he, he put all of his, his, his faith, his hope, 
trust in God fully. And so I, I think we need to look back at Hebrews 11, where we began a few weeks ago. And, and look at that very first verse where Paul explains exactly what he means by this faith. He says, now faith is the assurance of things hoped for. The conviction of things not seen. And then he goes on to say that by faith we understand that the world were prepared by the word of God so that what is seen, uh, what is seen was made from things that are not visible. So he gives us an example of, of that faith and how that faith comes about. That is the faith of Noah. That's the faith Noah had. If we look at Hebrews 11, 7 that we read today, it tells us that, that Noah built the ark based on God's warning that there was a flood coming in the distant future. And Noah responded uh, to God in faith. There was no rain in sight, yet Noah's faith told him to, to trust God and to build the ark. James 2.17 reminds us that faith by itself, if it has no works, is dead. Noah put his faith into action. While the sun was shining, Noah built the ark. He must have looked pretty foolish to his generation. He, he must have put up with the, some, uh, uh, a lot of teasing and a lot of laughing and a lot of ridicule. Yet Noah continued to, to build the ark. Noah didn't know what uh, the future uh, would hold. Noah had faith in the one that he knew would be in his future. Are you an ark builder? I hope so. Because there's a flood coming in your lives. You know, I mentioned in our prayer request that I went to a funeral last Wednesday. It was a funeral of a 49-year-old friend of mine uh, in Graham. He was the picture of perfect health. He played college football. He was on the TV show American Gladiators. He had a beautiful wife, four beautiful children. Uh, and then a flood came. A flood in the form of a blood clot came and he was no more. But the good news uh, from all of that is he came from a lineage of art builders. And he was an art builder too. He was a man who walked with God and lived his faith every day. The thousand people that were estimated at his funeral on Wednesday gives testimony to this fact. And they will be people who will benefit from, from the ark that he built in his lifetime. It is the ark that he built that will, will sustain his family as they go through the flood of, of this pain and, and emotions and, and this loss that they feel. Are you an ark builder? I hope so. Because there's a flood coming. In 1992, uh, when I worked in the family oil business, a well blew out and burned our rig to the ground. It was a bad year. We didn't have insurance. But my father is an art builder, and we rebuilt. In 1995, my brother-in-law, at age 33, was killed in a plane crash and left my sister with three little children. But my sister's an art builder. And she persevered. Most of you know, uh, last year our granddaughter Hannah was uh, born deaf. But you know, she was born into a family of art builders. And her life will thrive and she will continue to be a testimony of God's goodness and God's grace. In his book, Twelve Gifts We Can't Afford to Lose, Dr. Dean Posey says that it took a uh, Noah, about a hundred years to build the ark. And he says that the ark was built to a size that was twice, as, twice the size it needed to be to hold all the animals that uh, Noah was instructed to put on that ark. And so why all the extra room? Why twice as 
much room. Dr. Posey says that the extra room was for all those people who will come into faith while Noah is spending a hundred years building the ark. But the sad reality is, outside of Noah's family, the Bible does not mention one person that came to faith and was saved by that ark. In 1 Corinthians 1.18, Paul says, for the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us, to us who are being saved, it's the power of God. So it was in the days of Noah. Matthew 24, verses 37 through 39 says, for as the days of Noah were, so will be the coming of the Son of Man. For as in those days, before the flood, they were eating and drinking and marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered the ark. And they knew nothing until the flood came and swept them all away. So too will be the coming of the Son of Man. The ark that Ken Ham built in Kentucky is finished. It opened on July the 7th of last month for people to come and give witness uh, to its testimony of faith. And it sounds like a great place. Uh, I think I would like to go visit it. But I like to think of the ark as a symbol of God's salvation, uh, of God's hope, of God's grace, offered to all people who will respond to God in faith and be ark builders in their own life. Now that doesn't mean that, that the ark builders are immune to floods. The floods of life. But they are, are, are carried through them on the foundation of faith. Art building is a testimony of faith. Art builders may not know what the future holds, but they know who holds the future. Are you an art builder? I hope so. Let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you for your word today. We thank you for Noah and his faith, his great faith. And we thank you for the opportunity to be uh, art builders in the here and now. That our faith may carry us through. Through the floods of life and through the eternity of you. In Christ's name we pray. Amen.